It's basically a Pokemon that was programmed into a program. So it's like Programception. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator. Welcome back to something that's not been seen on the channel in some time. I hope that you're excited to see it, I'm excited to make it, so uh, here we go. Our top 10 favorite Generation 1 Pokemon. I do plan to do all 7 generations, even the 8th generation once it drops, but Gen 1 is definitely probably my favorite generation. I'm not one of those uh, purists, one of those Gen 1ers that's like, oh, all the other generations are terrible because Gen 1 gameplay wise had a lot of problems, but it's hard to beat nostalgia. You know, this is the first game that I sat down with as a little 10 year old boy. It's what sucked me into the Pokemon series. So of course, this is where most of my favorites lie. In my top 10 favorites list, I had actually five of those top 10 uh, Pokemon were from generation one. So I'm not going to include them on this list because that would kind of be cheating. So maybe it's kind of like a, a top 15 list. Or I also will add in some honorable mentions, so it could be even like a top 20 list if you want to look at it that way. But either way, uh, the Pokemon that were included on the previous list, my top 10 favorite overall Pokemon, were Raticate, Arcanine, Cubone, Primeape, and Kangaskhan. Oh yes, all absolute bros. All the Pokemon on this list are complete bros, if you want me to be complete, completely honest. Um, if you want to hear a little bit more about why, maybe you can go check out Dayton's top 10 favorite Pokemon list. And uh, we'll jump into this list without much further ado, because I'm excited to, to tell you about some more of my favorite Pokemon. So, here we go. Number 10. Electabuzz, the angry tiger Pokemon. So many hours have been spent wandering through the power plant looking for one of these things. I probably got some sort of cancers or something like that because that's what happens when you live too close to a power plant. But um, it was totally worth it. It was totally worth it. I got like this angry electrical tiger looking thing. He's such a BAMF, dude! And um, I don't understand why this thing wasn't the, the lead Pokemon in the anime. Honestly, beats the shit out of Pikachu, bar none. He's angry as shit, walks around all angry and punching shit with his huge arms. I really, uh, probably the, the monkey-like arms with the tiger-like stripes and, um, he's got these little cute little antenna on his head. He's like a tiger alien. There's just nothing not to like about him. Absolutely awesome. Stats-wise, he's not really competitive. You know, most people will evolve him with an Electrizer, but... Um, Electivire is probably not one of my favorites, I don't think. Haven't gotten to that generation yet, but uh, all will be unveiled when I get there. For now, I will say that Electabuzz, definitely one of my favorite Pokemon, definitely deserving of a slot on this top 10 list. Number 9. Eevee, absolutely adorable little fox. Everything that you could want in a Pokemon. Just look at it! Oh, don't you want to squeeze his little cheeks? Uh, basically, whatever role you're missing in your team, whatever type you need, Eevee can be that for you. If you didn't pick a, a fire or water starter, then Eevee can fill that role relatively easily. Vaporeon is obviously the best choice, but you can fill any role that you need to, especially in later generations. You get the uh, grass type, ice type, fairy type, we're still waiting for the Steel Bug Dragon-type Eevees, but I'm sure that it's coming in Generation 12 or whatever the hell. I'm, I'm probably going to be sticking around for all of that, though, because I'm excited to see what Pokémon brings every new generation, and I'm never disappointed with Eeveelutions. A lot of people didn't like Sylveon when it came out, but it slowly grows on people, you know? You just can't not like it. It's so friggin' adorable! That might not be a selling point for most people, but for me, definitely it counts, and uh, Eevee is certainly deserving, if not for that reason, then for the reason that it can uh, evolve into basically anything that you need. I've placed it at the number 9 slot, still pretty high up, but definitely a cool Pokemon that I wanted to include. Number 8. Blastoise, he's probably the best starter. I didn't pick him when I was a kid, but that's because I was stupid. <laughs> the, 
Basically, Blastoise will take you through the first gym in the game with extreme ease, and you might have caught a Pikachu in Viridian Forest, especially if you're like me. If I know a Pokemon is there that I want, I will spend hours. HOURS! This is what gaming is all about! <laughs> Absorbing your life! Um, so yeah, you don't have to worry about Misty too much. You can even get a Grass-type. There's plenty of Grass-types on the way to uh, Cerulean City. So, you don't necessarily need to pick Bulbasaur, although Bulbasaur is pretty cool. I do like a Venusaur, but honestly, Blastoise is the man. He is the fucking man, and he is completely competitive, which is probably the best part about him. Absolutely a gigantic wall. He's got rapid spin and all kinds of utility abilities. He can also go offensive if you want, put some choice specs on him, and he'll blast some shit off the battlefield. Definitely never know what to expect from Blastoise, except for awesomeness. He always delivers on the awesomeness, especially with giant water cannons sticking out of his back. That shit is just amazing. I don't see how anyone could dislike this Pokemon. That is why it has made it into this list at number 8. Number 7. Alakazam basically flipped the entire Gen 1 metagame on its head. It's so friggin' fast, uh, crits were based on speed in Gen 1, which you'd know if you were watching all my other Pokemon videos. But beside that, um, even in later generations, once the speed thing was fixed, he's been an absolutely massive threat. And he has so many movesets that he's able to run. Not only that, but he obviously has a really, really cool look for him. Some of this fan art displays it more exceedingly well than I could ever explain it. I do like also the, the controversy over Alakazam. There's a magician, I guess you'd call him, Yuri Geller, who tried to sue Nintendo uh, because Alakazam bent, bent spoons, and that's like his thing or something like that. Obviously he lost the case, but I think that's a really interesting piece of uh, real world Pokemon lore that uh, brings Alakazam to the forefront of my mind. He's got an IQ of... 10,000 or something like that, something crazy, which means this dude must have been watching a lot of Rick and Morty. <laughs> uh, Alright, bad joke, sorry. Number 6. Lapras. Oh yes, the water and ice type that was found in Silph Co. It has no evolution or anything like that, but it, it doesn't really need one. It's absolutely gorgeous. One of the most beautiful Pokemon, I think, in the game, and it offers a lot of utility as well. You can build it a lot of different ways. It learns a lot of HMs as well, if that's what you want to use it for, just HM slave your Lapras. That's completely viable, but I wouldn't suggest it, just because of the fact that Lapras offers so many unique abilities. I really like the fact that she can learn Parish Song. All users faint in three turns. What? That's absolutely insane for uh, especially big NPC battles that you are having a hard time getting through. Lance is down to his last Pokemon? Alright, Parish Song, you're done. You're done, kid! Get out of here! Lapras also learns Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, Surf, whatever you want her to do. She's right there for you. Definitely a big bulky water type. There's no shortage of bulky water types. Uh, Melodic was on my top 10 favorite Pokemon list as well. But Lapras is definitely in the top of the top. If I had to make a bulky water type list, maybe I will someday, then Lapras would likely be on it. So thank you Sylphco and your genius engineers for making one of the best Pokemon in Generation 1. Number 5. What is cooler than a giant fucking snake made out of rocks? Basically nothing. Uh, as soon as I saw this thing on Brock's team in the first gym, first of all, it was handing me my ass, which is, uh, <laughs> a good reason to go try and get one. It has a really nice stat distribution as well, um, a lot of defense. I'm talking a lot of defense, and then a pretty good amount of speed as well. Onyx is probably one of the better rock types in the game. I did pick Golem to go through, I didn't spend much time grinding trying to get an Onyx. But I did end up with one in a mystery egg run um, many years after I played through Red and Blue, 
and I wasn't disappointed at all. I was actually really shocked at how well he performed, even though I never got a trade going because nobody was playing Generation 4 at the time. <laughs> and um, he still stuck it to people, you know? He was an unevolved Pokemon. I could have had a Steelix, but no. Onyx proved to me that you don't need to evolve your Pokemans or whatever, so maybe Ash is onto something with not evolving his Pikachu. I don't know. I don't know, I'm kind of siding with that kid at this point. But um, aside from his competitive abilities, uh, or somewhat lack thereof, you know, if you use him in Little Cup, he's very, very viable. But um, if you're trying to use just a regular Onyx with a Veolite, you'll probably be di disappointed. Probably better going with the Steelix. But on top of that competitive ability, uh, he, he just looks awesome. How can you not like it? It's a giant rock snake. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Number four. In the number four slot, we have Machamp, the man himself, Forearm Goro. <laughs> Machamp is an absolutely awesome Pokemon. Machop is relatively easy to find. If you can find somebody to trade, get a Machamp. Its attack stat is through the roof. Competitively, I used one as a lead Pokemon in Generations 3 and 4 for a very, very long time. With Dynamic Punch and No Guard, it can take out almost any threat. If you're unsure what I'm talking about, No Guard makes it so no move will ever miss on either Pokemon. Dynamic Punch is an ability with only 50% accuracy. But with no guard, you can obviously hit with it every time. So it has 100 fighting power and it confuses the enemy every time. Pair that with a move like Bullet Punch. You can take out Focus Sash, user, Focus Sash users and things of that nature, which is really, really appealing, especially in Generation 1. A lot of people were running that type of stuff. He's waned a little bit in usage with so many other competitors on the stage now. But still an awesome Pokemon in his own right. Just look at him. Oh my god, how glorious. He's a little bit proud. Too proud for his own good, perhaps. Especially these days when uh, you got Buzzwole and Throw running around. Beating him in the bulk department. And then you've got, you know, Sock and Pheromosa beating him in the speed department. But Machamp is in a nice middle ground. He definitely holds a special place in my heart due to him being around in Generation 1. Still competitive, still viable, still sexy as fuck. Number 3 I love the internet. I love Porygon. Porygon lives in the internet! <laughs> uh, Porygon's one of the most interesting Pokémon that I can possibly imagine. It's basically a Pokémon that was programmed into a program. So it's like Programception. The Porygon that you see with all those polygons and shit, that's how a Porygon would actually look. That actually is what a Porygon is, because it's programmed in the game, and in the game it's programmed in the game. You know what I'm talking about? I don't even know what I'm talking about. That's how cool Porygon is. <laughs> It'll just blow your mind. Uh, I really thought about making Porygon number one on this list. It's super hard to, uh, to narrow down these last few Pokémon. But uh, I decided he'd have a fine slot at number three. Competitively, he's got an extremely diverse move set. You've got Tri Attack, Psy Beam. The conversion moves are absolutely crazy. You can uh, convert yourself into a move that perhaps your opponent can't hit super effectively, which is really, really useful, obviously. He learns Recover, pair that with Toxic. Oh my god, Porygon just has so much going for it. It is a fantastic Pokemon. I don't see it used as much as I hoped that I would, or that I believe that I should, but still Porygon holds a special place in my heart. In Pokemon Go, he was one of the first rare 5 kilometer eggs that I hatched. I was super proud of that. I named him Pornygon, and uh, I was showing him off. All my tin Team Instinct bros were like, hey man, where'd you get that shit? I'm like, I hatched it from my egg. Hell yeah. What's the chances I'll do that again? Probably nothing. Never. Nil. I have largely stopped playing Pokemon Go, although I do miss the first few months when it came out. It was it was huge. It's an experience unlike any other that I've had. But this isn't a Pokemon Go list. This is a Pokemon uh, Gen 1 list. 
Porygon also has a bit of real world drama attached to it. The Electric Soldier Porygon episode of the anime was pulled from the air after it caused a few Japanese children to have seizures. Which is not really funny, I probably shouldn't laugh at that, but secretly it's hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, Porygon's on this list for a number of reasons. His Pokedex number is also 137, which is almost uh, 1337, you know, elite. Which, yeah, he's, he's elite Pokemon. He's elite dude. Lead as fuck. I love Porygon in so many ways. But he was pushed out by the last two Pokemon, so let's see who they are. Number two. Gengar might seem like a bit of a stereotypical choice for a list like this. Everybody loves Gengar. He is absolutely awesome. Poison and Ghost type are extremely effective offensive types. These days with Mega Gengar, his evolution, he's absolutely a force to be reckoned with. His special attack stat shoots through the roof as does his speed and it's just really really hard to stop him. Especially with a substitute disable setup, he's got a lot of nasty tricks that he can do and uh, he now more embodies that prankster role that he was meant to play more than he did in Generation 1, which I really, really think is cool. Game Freak obviously did a lot of work to make him the way that he is nowadays. Gengar might be adorable in an evil kind of way, uh, but he definitely has an evil nature overall. He delights in casting curses on people, according to his Gen 5 Pokedex entry. Uh, he often plays tricks and things like that. He'll follow you around and pretend to be your shadow for a little while before popping up and trying to scare the shit out of you. Gengar doesn't really scare the shit out of me. I kind of want to give him a, a little cuddle, you know, even when he's got his, his creepy face on. But I'd probably get poisoned and, and die from toxic damage. So I'll avoid doing it for now. I'll admire him from afar. But I definitely do love Gengar, especially in the anime. Every, everybody that was cool had a Gengar. Agatha had a Gengar in the Elite Four. Morty had a Gengar. Um, and Gengar came out of the woodwork to, to beat uh, Sabrina's Alakazam, which really wasn't possible in Generation 1 because Alakazam would just be like psychic and then the poison type would, would explode. But if you mega evolve Gengar, he's faster than Alakazam and, and you can eat him for lunch these days. So uh, really fitting. I still question the, the poison typing, but uh, it, it is what it is. We have plenty of pure ghosts. He's one of the only poison ghosts, so glad to have him on the number two spot in this list. I do not hesitate to say Gengar, one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon. But who beat out Gengar? Who could possibly beat the Master of Shadows, Mr. Gengar? Well, let's find out. After some honorable mentions, yes, I do have five honorable mention Pokemon that almost made this list. Uh, you can consider these 11 through 15 or 16 through 20, I guess, if, you, if, you're, if you're counting the Pokemon that were on my top 10 favorite overall list. The honorable mentions that I have lined up are Starmie, oh my god, so fast, so amazing, has been top in the competitive metagame for way, way, way too long. Since Generation 1, it's it's been sticking around, and for good reason. Starmie's just a fucking amazing Pokemon. I have Clefable, who I've always liked Clefairy, and it was actually going to be the main ma mascot in the anime, but it couldn't convey as much emotion as Pikachu, so they switched it up. These days, Clefable also has the ability to become a competitive force, learns cosmic power and stuff like that, toxic, soft-boiled, all kinds of crazy moves. She can stall the shit out of just about anything, and then you've also got Calm Mind and stuff to buff yourself and sweep through the enemy team. So definitely watch out for Clefable. Don't underestimate it. Um, Golem is also in the honorable mentions. This was my, my competition, Onyx versus Golem. In the end, I decided Onyx won out just a little bit for his wow factor, but Golem was such a bro in the original generations. Stuck with me almost all the way through the game. Uh, he did have to watch out for those very plentiful water and grass types, but aside from that, he could smash just about anything. Normal types, bird types come out. He's like, all right, bro, I got this definitely always want to have a rock type on your team and golem is an extremely good one to have so he's in the honorable mentions we've also got tauros 
Uh, probably the the counterpart to Kangaskhan, one of those high-powered normal attack types. Actually more powerful than Kangaskhan if you're looking at the competitive metagame. But my personal preference is Kangaskhan just for the personality that it offers. But Tauros is extremely nice. Again, Pokemon Go, this is the North American exclusive Pokemon. This is the one that they've chosen to represent us. It's extremely fast, extremely powerful. A lot of people know not to underestimate it. It learns Rock Slide and Earthquake, which gives it that perfect coverage. And then it also learns some high damage moves like Rock Climb. Pair that with Sheer Force and a Life Orb. This thing will wipe some stuff off the map. It's absolutely insane what Tauros can do. He almost made it on the list, not quite. Unfortunate, but it be what it be. Pinsir will give you a clue to what my number one Pokemon is. I probably just gave it away. But Pinsir's really cool. Um, I really like the look. I always nickname my Pinsir Dick Pinch because uh, that's just hilarious. And he's got some really high powered moves. He's got a lot of fighting type moves, which was kind of alluding to Heracross, I think who came along in Generation 2, but Pinsir was the Heracross before Heracross was a thing, so that gives him uh, some OG status. He's definitely an awesome Pokemon. His arms are a little spindly and weird, but I think his uh, head claws and his mouth more than make up for that. And his angry eyes, just look at those eyes. They've, they've caused some death before. Anyways, we'll jump into it. Please drumroll, here we go, number one favorite Pokemon of Gen 1. And number one. My number one favorite Pokemon. Cypher! <laughs> He's fucking awesome, dude. It's like a Praying Mantis Pokemon, which Praying Mantises themselves are absolutely some of the coolest things that I've ever seen. On this planet, as far as animals go, 10 out of 10. Best job. Thank you so much, God, Jesus, uh, for creating these masterpieces. They eat birds and things that are almost as big or bigger than they are, which just proves their, their fearless nature and their absolute killing power. He's got some giant scythes on his arms. He doesn't even have arms. He doesn't need arms like Pinsir does. He just has a giant fucking blade, which is absolutely insane. I love it so much. The badass factor of this Pokemon is just so extreme. And then talking about him competitively, even though he's unevolved, you could evolve him into a Caesar. You can give him an Aviolite and uh, have a bulky Caesar, which absolutely devastates things. Put your investments into defenses and HP and then give it Sword Dance to boost its attack. Its attack is already super high, so Sword Dancing just once or twice is gonna give it enough power to boost through. It can even learn Roost, so all you gotta watch out for there is status effects. If you get burned or toxic, that's gonna reduce the usage of your Scyther quite considerably, but pass it a substitute, something like that, it's good to go. Oh my god, it's fucking just amazing. An absolute force to be reckoned with. I don't even evolve my, my Scythers anymore. Caesar's overdone, bro. Everybody has a Caesar. Who uses Scyther? Dayton does. Dayton does. All the time. Every day. If I make another mono bug team, I'm definitely going to put a Scyther on it. Just to show you guys how devastating it can be. I've swept entire teams with this Pokemon. A lot, a lot of that is because people underestimate it. They're like, ah, he didn't even evolve his Scyther. Well, guess what? He doesn't need the evolution. He's got an Eviolite. It's fucking fantastic. He's brutal. He's awesome. He's amazing. He's competitive. He is my number one Generation 1 Pokemon for this list. Obviously, we do have Cubone and Kangaskhan. I still love you so much. But for this list, Scyther is the fucking man. So that's it, friends. That's my list. Counted it all down. Over 20 Pokemon mentioned. So you can get kind of a good idea of what my my taste is, what kind of style of Pokemon I like. Usually they're more badass, but I can definitely appreciate a beautiful Pokemon as well, as shown by uh, Lapras. We also were able to reminisce a bit about Pokemon Go, which I really still miss, but it's really nice to go back and relive those good old days, both for Pokemon Go and for these Generation 1 Pokemons, which were a huge part of my childhood. I definitely, definitely liked just scrolling through all the different 
types and things like that. Electrode, oh my god, what a bro he is. He exploded in my face a few times while he was on the enemy team, but still, he's an, he's an awesome dude. I really like him. I could keep going with this list. Really, I like every Pokemon from this generation in its own way, but um, I'm really excited to see they got some Alola forms and things like that in Generation 7. Raticate has been all changed up. Now he's a dark normal type. Muck got a, a dark and poison type now. They added the dark type. So it's really, really cool what they're doing with these Pokemon. I really like the change ups. I hope to see some more for Generation 1 Pokemon. We will definitely keep an eye out for it, without a doubt. Anyways, I've rambled far too much. Thank you so much for watching, friends, if you have made it this far. Please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy this episode. You could even dislike it if you disliked it. But uh, please leave a comment. Let me know why. What can I improve to, to get your likes? Because that's what I want. That's why I do this whole thing, you know? I'm doing it for your approval. So please approve of me. Uh, we've also got Patreon, Discord, Twitter links down in the description. If you'd like to support me on any of those, that would be much, much, muchly appreciated. Um, I really do like to reach out with people and chit-chat, and that's another huge reason that I do this. You can offer me some criticism privately there, which maybe you want to do, and I'll take it to heart. Anyways, friends, thank you so much for watching once more. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. This has been my top 10 favorite Generation 1 Pokemon. I shall see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye-bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friend.